So you've decided to buy a truck. Well, here's a couple of things that you should probably look for when you do. First off is you're gonna be buying the truck probably from a dealer or from somebody else. You're gonna to wanna to corner a salesman. And when I say corner a salesman, I mean you're gonna corner a sale. I get into a dealership, I corner a salesman. I ask so many questions that that guy can't get me out of there fast enough. That is good practice. Ask questions, talk. Don't be afraid and don't feel that you're embarrassed because you don't know something. They're trying to sell you a truck and they want you to buy it. If you're there, you don't wanna buy something you don't want. And the only way to find out whether you want it or not is to ask questions. Make sure you ask a lot of questions. Don't be afraid. When you buy a used truck, the first thing I look for is obviously I look at the miles. I don't want a mileaged out truck. It's got a million miles on it and the engine's tired. I want to look for a truck that's got as low a miles as possible for the year that I'm buying the truck. It's important to find a truck where the miles and the year of the truck add up. If you've got a, a 2013 truck and it's only got 200,000 kilometers or 200,000 miles on it, there's something wrong. Either the truck has been sitting for an extended period of time, which you don't want, or somebody's been messing with the computer and the mileage isn't matching up to the ECM. These are things you need to look for. Make sure your mileage and your truck add up. But in general, you probably want to try to get the lowest miles you can. Why? Because you want to be able to run that truck. You want to get as much life out of that truck. The lower the miles that are on the truck, the more life it has left in it makes sense. Don't buy a truck that's got 1.5 million kilometers on it. That truck is probably going to need an overhaul or an in-frame and you're going to be on the hook for it. The next thing that I'm going to look for is I want to know about the service history. I'm going to find out the service history on that truck. Who had it? If you can find that out, some places will be able to give that to you. Um, and what was the history done on the truck? When were the oil changes done? And what frequency were they done? What oil did they use? Did they use fleet filters? Did they use, did they use uh, carrier filters? Did they use proper shops? Did they change their own oil? Did they do their own maintenance or did they take it to a shop? Um, find this stuff out. It makes a difference. The service history on a truck will tell you a lot. I have the entire service history. When I go to sell my truck, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna hand the next owner of my truck a, a pamphlet or, or, or a, a folder that thick with the entire service history of my truck. When I buy a truck, I want that service history. I wanna be able to go back from the day that that truck went into service and look at any repairs, good or bad. I wanna know oil, obviously, transmission, you know, you still gotta change transmission fluid. You don't do it like oil changes, but it's gotta be done. Was it done at the, at, at the proper mileage? I wanna know those things. Those things are gonna tell me what's going on with the engine or give me a better idea what's going on with my truck before I buy it. I know how well it's been maintained or how poorly it's been maintained. If it's about, if the guy hands you a one piece of paper and says, oh, there's your service history, I'm not touching that truck. I'm not going with, I don't care how good the price is or how low the miles are. That truck's been, hasn't been maintained properly. I could have a 200,000 mile truck and I may only get 200,000 miles out of it. The motor's going to blow up and it's going to cost me 40 grand. I'm not doing that. Um, once you've got your service history in hand and you've had time to go through it, um, you're going to want to have the truck inspected. I'm not taking anybody's word for it that's selling me a truck. The word, oh, you can trust me is never going to happen with me. If I'm buying a truck from you, I would expect you to give me the common courtesy to be able to take that truck off site to a separate third party and have the truck gone over. Usually a trusted dealership or a trusted uh, 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 service uh, center that does that kind of thing. So it might cost you up to, up to three to 500 bucks, but you know what, that's three to 500 bucks that are well spent. Okay, take it off site, let them go over it. Basically tell the, the, the service center you want them to do a level three inspection on that truck. Just find anything that's wrong with it. And that way when you can bring the truck back and you've got this in hand and you can present this to the guy that's selling you the truck going, well, it's got a small leak here. It's got a problem with this. You know, how about we take care of those? Let's get those issues taken care of and let them eat the cost, not you. Why should you eat the cost on it three weeks after you've already got the truck off the lot? The next thing I generally look for 
or I look at when I'm buying a used truck. Um, sometimes you'll catch a break and they'll put new tires on for you. You'll get brand new tires, virgin rubber on the truck. Sometimes you don't. If you don't, look at those tires, okay? Check out the tires. Open the hood, check your steer tires. Check for tread patterns, check for grooves, check for anything that's, that's off on that tire. That will tell you whether there's something off on the front alignment. That'll also tell you you might have a kingpin issue. There are certain things that tires, the indicators, indications on tires will tell you about other components on your truck. There's nothing worse than buying the truck and again, two weeks later, you're replacing kingpins or you've got to have an alignment. We'll go back on service or check your service history and see when the last time the truck was aligned. Generally, when you put new tires on a truck, you get an alignment done or, or you should. So see if that was done. Um, when you're buying the truck, I check the tires. I go to the back of the truck, I check all eight tires. I measure, I don't have the gauge with me right now, but I've got a, 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 a tire depth gauge. I check the, the, the depth of my treads. How much tread, how much tire life is left on that truck? Are there any, uh, are, are the outside tires of the tires worn out? Are the inside of the tires worn out? Have I got streaks going across? All of that tells me other things about the truck. The next area that I go to is I've got the hood open. I've got the engine started. I listen when I started the engine. Did it turn over right away? Did I get a good solid start? Or did it crank out three, four, five times before it started? Did I get a good, I like when I turn the key on my truck and I get whoop, bang, and it fires. I like that. If it's winding out four, five, six cranks before it starts, you might have an issue. You don't want to deal with issues. You're buying a truck. You want to be able to take that truck and go to work. You don't want to take that truck, go to the shop and then go to work. If the truck's been sitting for a couple of days, get on your knees and look underneath that truck. Look on the ground. Is there oil on the ground? Transmission fluid on the ground? Steering fluid, power steering for, uh, uh, fluid on the ground? Differential fluid on the ground? Is there anything dripping off that truck? Yes, trucks have little drips here and there of certain bits that are not to worry about. It's almost like your truck breathes and it bleeds a little bit. And that's certain, but if you've got a puddle under that truck, find it and find where that puddle's coming from. That's gonna cost you money. Listen to your engine. Listen to what's going on in that engine. When was the last service done on this truck? How many guys have taken this for a test drive? Um, I generally try, if I can, to find out, for, for engine wear, I try to find out who owned the truck before me and what were they doing with it. You know, was it on with a company that was pulling heavy haul and that engine might have 350,000 miles on it, but it's been pulling 150,000 pound loads up and down hills. That engine's gonna be a little more worn out. Yes, the mileage is low, but it's been worn and worked very hard. So the inside components are probably gonna be a little more worn out. Find that kind of stuff out. Ask questions about the engine. Probably the last thing you're gonna do after you've done everything else is you're gonna to wanna to take it for a test drive. I've actually known guys that have bought a truck, gone into the dealer, looked at the truck, walked around, and never turned a wheel on that truck. Bought it, never drove it. Test drive your truck. Every dealer is gonna let you test drive it. Take that truck out on the road and don't take the truck out and just go around the block and come back and go, yeah, that's nice. Take the truck for a drive. Make sure there's enough fuel in it because they generally don't leave a lot of fuel in them, but make sure there's enough fuel in it that you can have that truck for one hour, okay? Where I bought my truck, I bought it out of a dealer in Burlington, so I had access to city streets, service roads, and I had access to the highway. I drove that truck on all three. I put the truck through all three conditions. I was on a service road, twisting, turning. How does the truck feel? How's the steering feel? Does it wander? Is there anything going on? Is it shaking? Is it shimmering? No? Okay, carry on. Let's go into the city part. Let's do intersections. Let's get on uh, my truck's a manual transmission. I don't have an automatic. How does the clutch feel? All of those things that you're gonna be doing on a daily basis, how does it feel? You okay, I'm at a stop sign. Okay, I speed up, speed up, speed up. I gotta slow down, slow down, slow down. Come to a red light. 
Put the truck through its paces of what you're gonna do. Try to cram as much of it as you can into that hour that you're gonna take. And then take it out on the highway. Get out on the highway, and it's not usually advised that you let go of the steering wheel, but get into the center lane if you're on a three lane highway. Uh, that's usually the flattest lane. And don't let go of the steering wheel, but just hold on lightly and don't steer. Just let the truck go for a couple, see what it wants to do and, and calm yourself and feel what the truck is doing. If the truck is shaking, shimmering, it's moving one way or the other, you're gonna feel certain things. Those are indications that there's something might be off, your alignment might be off. Um, hanger bearing could be gone. Um, kingpins could be gone. Uh, again, if, if you didn't look at the tires, you could have, you know, you could have a worn tire. One worn tire will send off the whole, the whole alignment of a truck. Take your truck for a drive and, and, and don't be cheap about it. Put the truck through its paces. Don't abuse it, but put the truck through its paces. This is a huge investment for you and it's gonna be feeding you for years to come. Don't, don't half-ass it.